Hi, welcome back to another episode of Watches, Oliver Smith. Thank you for joining us. Today we want to take a look at the service industry, the watch service industry in particular, which is very complicated <laughs> uh, from, from understanding. And a lot of things have changed in the last 10 or 15 years, yeah. so we want to go over that. First, we want to talk about what we're wearing. And I know George is going to be really excited to see <laughs> that I'm wearing my original Raymond Weil wow, chronograph. Wow, okay. Parsifal. I think this He's is been like hiding a, this from me all morning. I've been first, trying to see what's uh, on his wrist. The first watch line I had was um, Raymond Weil. Wow. And I think it was 1988 or something like that. And this was my first piece that I really, really loved, the chronograph. 18 karat gold and steel. And it hasn't seen the light of day for about 10 years yeah. because I've had so many other fun things sure. to yeah, wear. Sure, yeah, absolutely. What it's about hard. you? What do you uh, want to I've, I've got uh, this old thing. Um, I have Patek Philippe's stainless steel Nautilus. And this one is the annual calendar version. Um, this is nice. out of our pre-owned collection, so it is for sale. Um, if it's something you you think you're interested in, please give me a call. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, many of you have worked with our outstanding watchmaker, Mr. Benjamin Lamb, yeah, ben. in our store. Ben's been here for a while and, and he's got quite a following. Yeah. Um, but we really wanted to talk about what it takes to repair a watch. Yeah. So let's say you your watch gets some uh, moisture in it, you're uh, on a vacation and you, you see, some, you, you <laughs> see some moisture underneath. So yeah. you have to bring it into the watchmaker to have it worked on. So that process is is more complicated than most people Absolutely. think. Absolutely, um, it, it, it's it's funny. I cannot tell you how many times um, somebody will bring a watch in and they, they haven't done it before. So we'll give them a call in a couple of weeks with the estimate and the time frames, and it is jaw dropping on how one how expensive it can be, but really how much time it takes. Generally speaking, we quote eight weeks. To, to fix a watch. Right. Right? That's just, right. And that's not a specific brand. That is the watch industry in general. Yeah. And we kind of wanted to go into um, why that so is. So you can, you can um, when you take the back off of the watch, you can see where some of the problems lie in the watch. But you can't fix a watch like you can your car, no. where you take out the alternator and you put in a yeah. new alternator. The, the mechanical movements that are in these watches, and right now you're looking at a... Uh, Rolex from what? Well, this from is 1960s? this is no earlier. Earlier, oh, this is, this is a, uh, it's a it's a late forties uh, Rolex. Uh, we did a video on this earlier. These um, are the parts in here. Look at them. How correct. Yeah. So here. Ben's working on this one right now. The um, the automatic portion Hands. of the movement was not working. So to do this Dial. properly. You completely Stay. take the watch apart. Right. I mean, you've got case, case back. You have dial. You have the date wheel that's behind the dial. The hands from the front, the movement, the base plate, um, all the other plates, the screws, and then the winding mechanism. And then all taken in, apart, in, cleaned. In this particular instance, too, these parts are no longer available. Not even remotely. So, Ben has to make a part for a piece. Correct. Like yeah, um, we, right? we try to source. You, you try to go OEM when you can. Right. Right. But um, that's why we have Ben. Ben is fully capable and more than qualified to make a cog or a wheel or a pinion. Um, it's actually amazing to watch him do it. So when, why would you send a watch back to the manufacturer and not have Ben? Um, it, it's, it's easy. Um, ben is more than qualified. He is our ace in the hole. I couldn't do half my job without him. But he's one man. So... George, tell us a little bit why one watch would go to Ben and maybe another watch. Like this, this is a Breitling you're seeing here, and then this is a Rolex here. And the Breitling is more of a new timepiece. But look at all these parts. But, but, to it. but even oh then, um, if, if something is new and modern, um, generally speaking, we're going to send out to manufacturer. You get the warranty, you get um, everything you want in a modern and watch. And they still supply the parts. Correct, correct. Right? And, 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 and Ben is one man, he's highly sought after, but he's going to do the stuff like, like, I could never send that Rolex back to Rolex. Right. They don't have parts. They're not going to do it right. right. So, so Ben's more of a, maybe a restoration guy. Gotcha. He's got that skill level right. that, that, that we really appreciate, but um, but we're not going to have him do most of the modern stuff. Right. There's no need. So we have to see the watch. It comes in. Correct. John, our uh, service, service manager, yep. manager yep. takes a look at it. Yep. Uh, he decides. He shows it to Ben. Correct. He just they decide. Where ben it's makes the go, final assessment right? um, whether okay. it's, it's, he's going to do it here or send it out. And more often than not, it, it just makes sense to send it out because the warranties and such. 
So um, <laughs> it, it, in the time frame from that standpoint, then uh, some watches take longer than others. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Depending on um, uh, complication, how hand wrought they are versus um, an at a base, it's going to have parts everywhere. Parts yeah, too. absolutely. Parts. So that if you have to order some parts, they might take a week yep. or two to come in. You take yeah. the watch apart, you start to clean it, and then maybe something you figure that you have to replace a part so you have to make a part for it well, so that delays the project even even longer um, uh, for instance uh, uh, we had a gentleman uh, drop off a very complicated piece lately it was a uh, blanc pond tourbillon uh, mm. so swatch group here in the u.s can't do a tourbillon they just don't have the parts and have the capabilities so part of the time and the expenses that's got to go back to switzerland uh, it's basically got to go back to the guy who built it originally there are so. some schools though now in the united mm -hmm. states and some yep. of them financed by the swiss companies absolutely i yeah. know to to bring on more watchmakers so as a field it's a great field to get into because watches have gotten so expensively important to everybody, yeah. you know, from and, that standpoint. And so, overall, they're just lacking qualified people to handle the amount of time pieces that are the out there. United You're absolutely States, right. I mean, yeah. There's more in Switzerland, obviously. Like a lot right. of these companies will subsidize your schooling. You have to work for them for a little while, but they'll, they'll, they'll take care of you. They, right. they really want to get the right people out there doing this. Right. It would be a great career field for somebody that really likes to yeah, work. Absolutely. You know, on a small little time pieces like this, really fun work, really rewarding. So if you have a question about service or you want to have your time piece serviced, please give us a shot at Oliver Smith. Absolutely. We're happy to help you with that. Yep, can do. Thanks, George. Yep.